today I'm going to be talking about vaccines. More importantly, why vaccine hesitancy is a problem. It is important to inform families of the risks and consequences of not vaccinating. In this video, I will be discussing how a vaccine works, the cause of recent outbreaks, and common mistaken theories. There are several parents around the world who are skeptical of vaccinating their children. Most of these parents do not have a scientific basis or proper knowledge about how a vaccine works or what it actually does. When in reality, most parents are just afraid, afraid of making the wrong decision that might harm their newborn baby. When no action is being brought forward to try and convince skeptical parents, it proposes a threat to public health in a number of ways. Cognitive frameworks allow people to make decisions and access different choices being made. Parents make the choice to not vaccinate solely on their beliefs and what they saw on the internet. Parents need to be informed of the risk of not vaccinating and why we shouldn't be afraid of vaccines. This video is not made to try and convince all parents to vaccinate, but solely to inform people of misunderstood topics like vaccines. In order to understand vaccines, we must first look at where they came from. In 1796, Edward Jenner injected material from a cowpox virus into an 8-year-old boy with the hope that it would protect him against smallpox. And it worked! It saved many from the smallpox virus and this was the first ever vaccine. Vaccines might be difficult to understand, but I'm going to explain it in simpler words. A vaccine is a weakened part of a germ. Immune cells replicate and attack it. Once attacked, they use memory cells to remember the germ and are prepared now for the real full germ. 90% of the United States vaccinates, meaning 28 vaccines are given to children within the first two years of life. It may seem like a lot, but these vaccines are helping them fight against 14 different diseases. There have been several outbreaks of preventable diseases which include pertussis, also known as whooping cough, measles, mumps, and rubella. Measles was officially eliminated in 2000, but recently there have been a number of outbreaks. In 2013, Brooklyn, New York had 58 cases of measles. All infected were all unvaccinated. In 2014, California had 125 cases of measles. 49 were unvaccinated and 12 were infants. All of the 12 infants infected were too young to be vaccinated. Measles is an airborne disease, meaning it is transported by the air and can last up to two hours. So if you are in an elevator or a closed room with someone who has measles, you run the risk of catching the disease if you are unvaccinated. According to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, in 2015 there were 188 cases of measles. In 2016, there were 70 cases of measles, and as of right now, in 2017, there have been 21 cases. Pictured here is a United States map that represents vaccine coverage for 2015 based on state and local area. The white states are represented by states who have a coverage percentage of about 75%. The lighter blue states are represented by states who have a coverage percentage of about 80%. The darker blue states are represented by states who have a coverage percentage of about 82%. The dark blue states are represented by states who have a coverage percentage of about 84%. And the navy blue states are represented by states who have a coverage percentage of about 86.5%. The main reason for outbreaks are travelers who enter the United States, so if you travel to a different country, travel with caution. For those of you who are unaware of what measles looks like, here's an image of a little boy with measles. Measles symptoms do not appear until 10-14 to 14 days after exposure, and can include cough, runny nose, inflamed eyes, sore throat, and fever, so similar to symptoms of the flu. Some concerns that parents have are that their immune system can't handle it, too many at once, and I've never seen it, so why worry? In the United States, children entering kindergarten must have the polio, MMR, which is measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, pertussis, which is whooping cough, tetanus, and diphtheria vaccines. Here is New York State's immunization requirements for school. The measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is the least administered in the United States, but has been rising since 2013. As of 2015, Arkansas had the lowest coverage percentage at 75.3%. There are some states that may grant exceptions due to personal belief, religion, or medical reasons. Most parents who exempt due to personal beliefs might exempt because they don't want to vaccinate, not because they have a reason. 
In California, 3% were exempt. But something happened recently. On June 25, 2015, Governor Brown signed the Senate Bill SB 277. This bill changes immunization requirements, so no more exceptions, unless you're homeschooled or for medical reasons. It is important to have immunity as it is a defense system. Vaccines help protect communities, not just individuals. Herd immunity helps protect everyone. It works if a high percentage of individuals are immune to the disease, which helps prevent the spread of the disease. Herd immunity helps protect infants, elderly people, and those with weakened immune systems. In measles, 95% of the community must be vaccinated in order for herd immunity to work. If some get vaccinated, the virus spreads, but if most get vaccinated, the spreading is contained. Low percentages of vaccines are due to mistrust and emotional stories of parents. There are several stories of parents who saw changes in their child, who got autism or who became disabled. But parents see the vaccines as causative due to the symptoms seen soon after vaccinated. For example, prolonged seizures were seen after MMR vaccine in 2006, but most of the children had Dravet syndrome, which is caused by mutation in the SCN1A gene, not by vaccines. Vaccines can appear to cause harm, but they do not. There is no scientific proof for vaccines being harmful. An example is autism, which is a neurodegenerative disorder which contains a variety of symptoms and stages of disability. Symptoms can include social and cognitive deficiencies. A main cause of autism is a deletion in chromosome 22q13.2, not by vaccines. Some parents may ignore evidence because they don't want to believe it. Autistic features start showing up the same time the MMR vaccine was given. In recent studies, rates of autism were the same whether or not vaccinated. Various research studies have helped show that there is no linkage between vaccines and autism. Parents are given all this information opposed to the relationship between autism and vaccines and still deny it. After a certain point, you just have to say, enough is enough. We are giving you facts, evidence, and the science behind it. After a certain point, there's not much left to do. Like any medication, vaccines are not risk-free. Risk of side effect is small. One in one million might get an allergic reaction. Now, there are reasons to be skeptical, and reason one is Dr. Wakefield. Dr. Wakefield suggested a link between autism and vaccinating in 1998 research. But his paper was retracted in 2010 due to being scientifically flawed. Just because one thing follows another does not mean that they cause one another. Reason two is thimerosal. Thimerosal and vaccines, which contains ethyl mercury. There are two types of mercury, methyl mercury and ethyl mercury. At high levels, methyl mercury can be toxic. It is also found in fish. Ethyl mercury is found in thimerosal, and it prevents the growth of bacteria in vaccines. The body gets rid of thimerosal very easily. In 2001, thimerosal was taken out of all childhood vaccines. MMR, varicella, and polio never contained thimerosal. In 2004, the Institute of Medicine of the National Academies stated that there was not a relationship between MMR and autism and thimerosal and autism. Parents are too emotional and that is okay. It is a sensitive topic when you are talking about their child. But parents need to understand that not vaccinating their child is harmful. Parents rather their child get natural illness because getting sick isn't a bad thing. Skeptical parents will bring back disease that haven't been seen in decades. Outbreaks are preventable with vaccinations, but it's your choice if you choose to listen or not. Skeptics will always have something, whether it's the MMR vaccine or thimerosal. But unvaccinated children are in harm due to fears that are unfounded. Public health officials are looking for the good of all. Parents are looking for the good of their children. I am not saying it's a bad thing to look for the good of your children. I'm saying it is important to know what the consequences might be. Fear of what a vaccine can do to a child is replacing the fear of disease. Whooping cough kills several babies a year. Babies get their first dosage at two months. That means that babies have a chance of catching the disease within those two months of being unprotected. Whooping cough is caused by bacteria that acts as a toxin and attacks airways and causes a bad bronchitis. Whooping cough was rarely seen in developed countries, but it is now back. 
This can be prevented if all parents vaccinated their babies. The pertussis vaccine is given at 2 months, 4 months, 6 months, 15 months, and again at 4 years old. Another vaccine that is questioned by parents is the HPV vaccine, also known as human papillomavirus, which is a common cause in cancer virus. 80% of people will catch it at some point in their life, and currently there have been 25,000 cancer-related cases that occur in the United States. The HPV vaccine is given to boys and girls between the ages of 11 and 12 years old. HPV is a common virus that is passed by sexual contact. Many parents do not want to give their child this because they believe in teaching their child abstinence. It prevents girls from getting cervical cancer and prevents boys from getting throat and mouth cancer. Now let's recap what was discussed in this video. Measles was brought back due to unvaccinated individuals. Pertussis can harm many individuals who are too young or can't be vaccinated. Herd immunity is the resistance against a contagious disease when a high proportion of individuals are immune to the disease. There is no linkage between vaccinating and autism, as well as the MMR vaccine and autism. If you follow the regular vaccine schedule, you can prevent up to 16 different diseases. It is strongly recommended that children be vaccinated, and if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact your health care provider. Your vaccination decision affects more than just your child. It affects your family, your friends, and your whole community. I hope this video made you realize that vaccinating is important and that outbreaks don't stop occurring unless we start vaccinating.